In today's video, we are going to cover what to do and how long it will take for the grid to recover after an EMP. To put it simply, it will take a very long time. However, there are a few EMP myths that I'd want to dispel. Some worry that an EMP may strike without any prior notice. Statistically, a sudden EMP is not the most likely scenario, but it doesn't mean I'm ruling it out entirely. But let's zero in on the video I want to show you to establish that there's more to EMPs than meets the eye. To begin, an EMP is a sudden, powerful electromagnetic pulse. It was first used in the 1960s, during atomic bomb tests. A nuclear bomb was launched in the atmosphere above the Hawaiian Islands in a test known as Starfish Prime. Okay, what they didn't anticipate was that the EMP would take use of the ionosphere and all the charged particles in it to substantially magnify the pulse that impacted the Earth. As a result, any huge metal structures were subjected to a barrage of ions or electricity, practically cooking them to a crisp. When a coronal mass ejection from the sun had a comparable impact on Alaska, it was called the Carrington Event. However, this effect is magnified by an EMP. It's possible that Starfish Prime's creators were caught off guard by this development. There were many issues during the test in Hawaii in the early 1960s. The microwave plates used for transmission throughout the islands were fried, causing widespread difficulties for telephone companies and causing the unexpected activation of alarm systems. Now, contrast the current status of the United States with that of Hawaii in the 1960s. Our power cables, microwave dishes, and grid connections are all rather substantial. In this case, the explosion of any EMP weapon might have disastrous results. Therefore, a nuclear weapon is not the only cause of an EMP because it has little influence on the environment. The electromagnetic pulse is the most dangerous potential outcome. If our modern technology and infrastructure were destroyed, we may briefly return to a more rural lifestyle. But this situation wouldn't persist forever. At worst, it may last a few years at most. It's crucial to comprehend the mechanisms behind any EMP attack on the US. First, let's debunk the myth that suitcase bombs are common. As a nuclear weapon specialist, I feel obligated to point out that it is impossible to conceal a nuclear bomb in a suitcase. Although radioactive material may be concealed in a suitcase and used as a dirty bomb, a nuclear weapon requires a much larger and more complex mechanism in order to be detonated. After 9-11, radiation detectors were commonplace, even in state patrol cars. Radiation therapy patients may also be asked to carry a prescription to explain any measurable radiation levels. Since 9-11, Security measures in the United States have made it far less likely that a nuclear detonation could occur simply by transferring a weapon anywhere. Even if it's theoretically feasible, in practice such a thing is extremely unlikely to occur. In the event of a deliberate TMP, a misaligned intercontinental ballistic missile ICBM fired from a country like Russia, North Korea, or China is the most plausible scenario. The amount of time it would take a missile to reach its destination would change based on where it was launched from. It would take a North Korean missile around 20 minutes to reach Hawaii, but a missile launched from any other place would take about 30 minutes. Whether any MP or nuclear warheads are on board, there will be a delay between launch and arrival. However, the government may not instantly detect and relay the true magnitude of the threat. There is still uncertainty about how the government would view the situation, even if their systems are operating normally and warnings are being sent. It's possible that they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between an EMP and a nuclear assault on one of our sites or cities. The government cannot predict the particular sort of incoming missile without active intelligence gleaned through conversations or other means. For them, an incoming missile to the United States is an incoming missile, regardless of its payload. To identify approaching missiles, we use a wide range of sensor systems, including those on land, at sea, and in the sky. We won't know for sure if it's an electromagnetic pulse weapon or a nuclear missile until it reaches its target. Knowing this will help you prepare for the inevitable arrival of a missile over the continental United States, whether it carries an electromagnetic pulse weapon or nuclear warheads. The coming of this thing will be known to us. However, Without proactive intelligence, identifying the nature of the danger might be difficult. We must strike back before the oncoming rocket can do any damage. 
It's crucial to realize that many nuclear missiles headed for the United States are directed directly at our nuclear silos in an effort to render us unable to respond with counterattacks. This creates a precarious sequilibrium or standoff between countries with nuclear weapons. We have plans in place to try to shoot down a missile if we are able to detect one heading in our direction and ascertain its course. Nonetheless, we won't sit back and do nothing if we suspect an EMP is to blame. We will respond to this imagined danger with missile launches of our own. So, it's important to keep in mind that an EMP event won't happen out of the blue until there's been a big escalation or signs of nuclear conflict. It's interesting to speculate about what causes an EMP. It won't come from a missile in the sky or a person on the ground with a nuclear weapon. Where then might an EMP originate? That is the critical inquiry. As a result, it is highly unlikely that an EMP will strike the United States at random, without a substantial escalation or the emergence of nuclear warfare. However, the likelihood of facing an EMP rises if we approach the point of nuclear confrontation. It is crucial to tell the difference between an EMP event that occurs at random and the conditions that lead to a nuclear war. It's extremely improbable that a random EMP incident will lead to nuclear exchange and the commencement of World War III. The most important thing to keep in mind is that our enemies would have to be able to conduct any EMP strike against us. The chances of a strange EMP happening in the United States are remote, unless our technology or materials are released and someone else creates such a missile here. The United States, however, does have the technology to produce CMPs without resorting to nuclear weapons. We have the capability to launch guided missiles that can electronically destroy certain structures while leaving untouched areas around them. It's possible to do so, but it's not something that usually happens accidentally or for no reason at all. Things would be very different if there was a great conflict like World Conflict 3. At that moment, it's anyone's guess whether or not an EMP will occur. In such cases, being well prepared is of paramount importance. If you are worried about an EMP event happening at random, consider this. Our enemies probably don't have the intelligence to launch such an assault right now. There is no way to completely eliminate the possibility of espionage or technical progress. Finally, know that a random EMP occurrence is extremely rare and do what you can to calm people's anxieties about it. The likelihood of an EMP strike from our enemies is not a huge concern at this time because of the precise elements that would generally accompany an EMP event. But if we see things heading in the direction of conflict, the likelihood of an EMP event rises. Nonetheless, I feel it necessary to reassure our viewers that the instant assumption of an EMP is improbable even when suffering power disruptions. Such a powerful electromagnetic pulse event may serve as a preemptive attack to kick off World War III. Following the news and tuning into our channel for updates on world affairs is crucial. We'll keep providing insights and analyses, drawing attention to any warning signs that might portend such a disaster. But I do not think any MP event is likely in light of the current status of the globe. Of course, I may be wrong, so it's smart to have safeguards like Faraday cages ready just in case. In conclusion, while we should be ready in case of an EMP, we should also take stock of the situation as it is and acknowledge that the chance of an EMP event occurring in the near future is minimal. However, it is always important to be aware of and prepared for developments on a worldwide scale. Please view the following video which details the disastrous outcomes that would occur in the event of an EMP strike on the United States. Thanks for watching this video.